Good morning and welcome to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. And as you can see, this is not Beth to my left. Nope, it's it's me again. <laughs> it's you. Poor yeah. Ty. Poor Ty. I must say that uh, whenever uh, Beth is gone because her daughter had a, a doctor's appointment, she couldn't miss today. And so it's like, oh my gosh, who are we going to get on a Tuesday morning to film. We for, we film two episodes every Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. So it's like, guess what? You get out of the producer, executive producer booth and yep. get up front. Yeah. Do you like doing it? Do you have a yeah, problem no, with it? No, I have fun. I love I love directing it. It's it's easy. Mm -hmm. easy. Press, a, press a couple buttons, make sure you guys sound good. <laughs> Well, that's what I need from somebody is to make sure that I sound good. <laughs> I was telling Ty this morning, it got up this morning a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Beth keeps track of when everything airs. I have no clue. So um, uh, this morning it was stormy. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a stormy day. And I don't yeah. know. I'm one of those type people that unless the sun is shining and the birds are chirping, I don't want to get up. No, I don't blame you. I am not a morning person. I never have been. Especially when it's dark and gloomy. Yeah. It's just... Yeah, it's made to sleep in. Mm -hmm. It is made to sleep in, and then the <laughs> dreaded, the dreaded day is coming up. Spring forward. Mm -hmm. I hate spring forward. Yeah, I feel like I lose my entire life. It takes me months to get back on top of things. Yeah, how can one hour do that to you? It's crazy. <laughs> don't even know how to you can't hardly explain it it's like i yeah. don't understand how one hour can throw me all off and it will drive me crazy for a while mm -hmm. i'm hoping we can just stop doing it i would i don't know i still don't understand beth and i have talked about it before i don't yeah. know why we continue doing it it's something with the farmers the but i don't fully yeah. understand well, why or what for well you know i kind of understand back in the day when they you know were using their oxen yeah and they needed daylight but come on Tractors drive themselves oh, yeah. now, yeah. <laughs> so it's not like, you know, I I don't I'm done with it, and I think most people I want what I want to do is I want to fall back and I want to stay fell back. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want yeah. to spring forward anymore. Yeah. And the worst spring forward is if it falls on Easter morning. Mm -hmm. My yeah. goodness, when I went to the Methodist Church over in Clay City, spring forward it happened a couple times those few years that I was there, and it was like on. Uh, Easter Sunday, and of course they did sunrise service. Mm. So when you're up, at, you got to be at church at six, but it's yeah. really five. And you had to get up oh. at four. I mean, I'm telling you, I think that's where my uh, dislike for it came yeah. from. I don't know how many. I wonder if the, I don't know how many um, churches like our church service. I think stays the same. Mm. I don't know. Where do you, do you go to church? At? No, <gasps> no, we used to, <laughs> and then it just got a hassle to get two kids up out of bed in the morning. But. <laughs> But no, it can every be once in a while, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I sometimes I go to church with my girlfriend a few mm -hmm. times. Yeah, where does uh, she go? Uh, she goes over in Bible Grove, the Bible Grove church. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I, I go. We go. To, I Beth and I both go to First Christian mm -hmm. Church, and their service doesn't start till ten. Mm. So, but that's, so many, that's when their service starts. Yeah, at 10. and ten's not so bad. No, but boy, them I never could do a. When first Christian, we used to have like an 8.30 early service. And if I, and if I did the uh, worship leading on that one, I was like, ah, oh, I, mm. I about died. I, yeah. I just don't, I don't know. I've never, I think you're either a morning person or a night person. I'm, I, I'm a night owl. Are you? Now, yeah. can you stay up all night long? Oh, I can. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I hate the morning. Yeah, but I, I I can't I can't really stay up all night either anymore. Really? <laughs> I'm a nine hour sleeper. Mm. I want nine hours of sleep. If I get eight, I can function. But if I get less than eight, I get headaches. I don't, I can't even function. I'm I'm perfectly fine on five hours. Five? I I can function on five. Now, That's I, insane. I, I get more than five, but really? Yeah. I can't. Oh, I I would die. Paula Frutiger is a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. I've seen, she can go on four or five hours. And then just like run rampant all day long. I don't understand how. She, I don't see how you people do it. Uh -huh. I'd get headaches. My eyes would be bouncing off my head on the inside. There's no way I could do that. No, yeah. I can't handle it. No. <laughs> I don't know. That's to each his own, I guess. Yeah. I guess that's just how it works. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. I like my sleep. I don't. I like my sleep. I don't like my time change. And I need it to be sunny and the birds chirping every day of my life. I sounds, don't think that's too much to No, it sounds like a good life. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely sounds like a good life. And, oh, vehicles. I picked an ad this morning. Mm -hmm. I always loved those Volkswagen cars. Like oh, when I yeah. was younger, 
I wanted the bugs mm -hmm. because, of course, back in the 70s, you had Herbie the Love Bug. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I always wanted one of those cars, and I've never had one. But they were very dangerous cars because, you know, they had the motor in the back, which I don't know if that was a – Volkswagen's German, right? Yeah, they're German. Like, come on. Why would you put that in the back? Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know what the purpose of that no. was. But I've always just thought they sound cool. Mm -hmm. They look cool. I don't know. There's a couple people that have – I always wanted the, the convertible one. And um, there's a couple people in town that I don't know if Marsha Rudy still has her – her little convertible or not, but she know. had like a real pretty. She has a real pretty burgundy one with a tan, yeah, tan top. And but I prefer the old ones more than the new ones. But the new ones actually have the motor in the front, I guess. Hmm. But let's pull up this ad. I thought it was um, quite clever the way they did it. I there's no way I can read that, so I got to pull it up on my phone because I'm getting old, old, old. I love the way they did this. So like, okay, so like, look at the houses. Everything's the same. You got all the Volkswagens, right? Here's the here's the cleverness of the bottom part of the ad. If the world looked like this and you wanted to buy a car that sticks out a little, you probably wouldn't buy a Volkswagen station wagon. But in case you haven't noticed, the world doesn't look like this. So if you've wanted to buy a car that sticks out a little, you know what to do. I think that's the cleverest yeah. little ad. And they stick out. Oh, my gosh. Don't they, though? I mean, that's just really cool. And those Volkswagen wagons are Volks. That's really hard. Volkswagen wagon. The yeah. station wagon. I wonder why. I mean, to me, it looks like a van, but I guess they call that the station wagon. Yeah. Yeah. But in case, yeah, I, I just think it's really neat. And um, who is it that has one in town? Um Norma Stanford's husband, uh, Charles Stanford, he's got like his original Volkswagen van like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I have, I've never seen it. He keeps it pretty much tucked away. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's a really cool, yeah, the Volkswagen yeah. van. I the don't VW. remember when, but as a kid, I had a remote control of that wagon. Oh, really? Yeah. I nicknamed her like, Herbie because. Well, why obviously, wouldn't you? But, but yeah. Like, Remote control. I still have it. I don't think it works. The batteries are all. Well, how old corroded. are you? I'm 21 now. You're 21 now. So I probably would have okay. had it when I was seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. Because, okay. So you're 20. Oh, yeah. Because you're quite a bit. Okay. Because my con. Yeah. Connor's eight years. My youngest is eight years older than you. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I was just like thinking, you're too old to have a remote control cars, but I guess yeah. they've been out for a while. You still yeah. have it. You should probably keep it. Well, yeah, I still have it. I'm sure it does not work anymore because the batteries are probably all corroded. Right. In it and... I don't, well, now, were you a typical boy, like ram it into walls and stuff? Oh, no, no. I didn't even take it outside. It was all. Oh, really? I kept it inside. I would only you drive it. You totally need to keep that, I would say. Yeah, no. It's, I think it's, you need to keep it. It's nice. I should have found a picture and could have showed it off. Yeah, that's pretty. What color is it? Do you know? I, I think it's it's white and I, red like you that You think one. it's white and red? Yeah. It makes you wonder how many of those uh, Volkswagen station wagons like are still in in existence yeah. right and what colors they yeah because like okay real talk was the scooby-doo wagon mm -hmm. the cartoon scooby-doo was that a volkswagen um, the, what was that called the machine the mystery machine the mystery machine i don't know if it was a, a volkswagen i or feel not. like it was i'm sure they probably like modeled it after yeah huh now that i think about it that was like really groovy yeah <laughs> I wonder how many of Volkswagen wagons show station wagons showed up at Woodstock. I'm sure a lot. Yeah, I, it does make it because I'm telling you what those things those things are like worth sixty seventy thousand oh, yeah. dollars now. For what back in the seventies they probably paid four or five thousand mm -hmm. maybe for them. Yeah. Can you imagine if you had one of those that was in good oh. shape? You'd have a little mint on your hands. Yeah. That would be cool. Now I don't. I've talked to Beth about this before and. I, I guess when you're younger, uh, kudos to the people that realize what they have. Because, like, when we have, like, the four town days in Florida and you walk downtown and you have all these people that's, like, kept their original cars from, like, when they were 16. Mm -hmm. I think that's great that your people are looking to the future and keeping those. Yeah. I've said before, I drew, I, I drove when I was in high school a Buick Regal two-toned limited ex ex edition. I loved that car. And it was, like, crushed. Uh, burgundy velvet interior. Really? Oh, I love that thing. I would give anything to have that car back. But, you know, when you're like, oh, no, it's old. I want a different car. Mm -hmm. And then I trade, I traded it in for a stupid Ford Tempo. Yeah. 
that la- that shook when you went down the road. I could just <laughs> and that re- Buick Regal of mine, it was like a tank. It was like when the the doors were super mm-hmm. heavy. Wow. On it now, uh, that's the that's a yeah. I I guess I wasn't forward thinking in. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think of that. If you could go back and have a car, what did you have a car in high school? Uh, yeah, I've I've got the same car that I have. It's a 2012 Ford Escape. Ford Escape. Well, you yeah. better keep it because you never know. Oh yeah, no friends call call it the mom van. <laughs> but you know what? Whenever we were in high school and we all needed to go to lunch. Uh, I, everyone packed in my car. And oh, I took that's them funny. That's funny. So you. So were, who's laughing now? <laughs> right. I would say they are all laughing. Yeah. The mom van came. In, I've always hated vans. Jim had Jim had a van. He called it the Venari. I'm like that, and the boys. Oh my gosh, he, Jim ended up breaking it though because mm. my husband always pushes the envelope, pushes it to the edge. So he took this van, and he thought he could pull something with it. I don't know. It broke something. It, I don't know. He was a. I don't know. He broke the Venari, but yeah, he yeah. loved Jim. Loved that van. Mm-hmm. I was the only one. I'm like, I am not driving a mini. I am way too cool to drive a mini yeah. van. I'm not doing it. <laughs> so I never did drive a van as a. But you know, they're nice. I like the SUVs and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. I would, I would drive those. But yeah. yeah, but you better keep that. I bet they're all. They're probably all so jealous. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> you go down to the high school now, and it's ginormous trucks. High schools yeah. definitely. When I went to high school, there was only a very few people that drove to school. Mm-hmm. And now I bet every kid drives to school Yeah. in their vehicles. But you know what you never see down there? A Volkswagen station wagon. No. Never seen the Volkswagen station wagon down there. No, because it's, it's not cool to them. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what, what they, well, and what do they kids now think is old? Yeah. My Buick Regal. But it was the 70s. My Buick Regal was the 79. That's not bad. No. No, it was a 79, so it would have been, I don't know. No. I don't know anyway, but I bet those kids are envious of your your van. Oh, your, yeah. Your, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know my cars very well, but uh, yeah. uh, we're going to come back. And since it is springtime, our episode today is going to be on tornadoes. What a fun topic. Yeah, I'm All excited. Right. All right, we'll be right back. At your locally owned Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville, you can count on experts to have the solutions to keep you running on the road or in the field. More than just your car, the Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville carry a large inventory of Napa products for farms, heavy trucks, and just about everything that moves. Experienced associates understand your needs and are ready to help with the perfect part at a great value. That's Napa Know How at your locally owned Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville. Briscoe Surplus Sales on the northeast edge of Flora is your one-stop do-it-all shop. Looking for rugged boots and footwear from great brands like Lacrosse, Rocky, and Carolina? They're there. How about top-notch small engine parts and service? Briscoe Surplus Sales has it. Whether you're wiring your switches or switching your wiring, Briscoe Surplus Sales has the solution and the know-how to help you get the job done right the first time. Briscoe Surplus Sales, your one-stop do-it-all shop. We like technology at Flora Savings Bank. Here's what you can accomplish in our mobile banking app in less than 30 seconds. See account balances in your transactions, set up an account alert, make a transfer between accounts, get an alert text message about your transfer, pay a bill, turn your debit card off and then back on. It all happens in the palm of your hand with our free My Bank To Go app. Search My Bank To Go in the App Store or Google Play and give mobile banking a try. Flora Savings Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Doors, paint, windows, electrical, plumbing, and much more. Oh, yeah. Give me all your guns, too. John Lucas. What? You better be dreaming about all the stuff we sell here at Zinc Building Center. Oh, I would. Zinc Building Center in Louisville on Route 45. It's a cool place. Are we ready? Yeah, we're back. Yay, we're back. Welcome back to By the Way with Beth and Stacy, and now it's Ty. So I thought I was talking the other day, and I was like, well, it is springtime, and it's like we talk about tornadoes. And um, there's been several tornadoes. Most of the time when tornadoes come into Flora, they hit the south end of town. Mm-hmm. I don't know why tornadoes take the path that they do, 
but they do. And um, I literally live right in Tornado Alley. Really? So I grew up on South Locust Street, and I live on Fair Avenue. I've lived in the south of the town literally since I was two years old. And I remember so many tornadoes in the springtime in my life. Really? So many of them. Now, have you ever been in one? That I could remember. I don't think there was ever really any mm -hmm. crazy ones. Yeah. I know you have some 2004 ones, 2003 yeah. ones. Yeah, so 2002 and 2000. I wrote the wrong date on that one. Yeah, I'm going to talk about 2002 and 2004 because I remember both of these. And gosh, she doesn't think, you know, 2002 has been a, went a while back now. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I was, I was remember whenever we were younger, funny story which is not really too funny but my friends there was people in town their last name was Penzoti, and my my mom and dad they had like four or five kids i can't remember and um my had two older sisters diane and linda and we went to visit them and i believe it was ohio i'm not really sure and everybody went out to eat this is my very first uh tornado experience yeah so the Penzotis lived in this big apartment complex, okay? Well, the parents are going out to eat, and um, so the older sisters, because my oldest sister, Diane, is nine years older than me, and some of the Penzotis were like 10 and 15 years. I mean, you know, so yeah. I was probably four, three or four, so Diane and Linda would have been teenagers, yeah. right? The Penzotis would have been teenagers. So they left in charge. Well, a tornado busts through Ohio. Mm. I think it's Ohio. We're either in Ohio, Indiana. We're in the Midwest somewhere. I can't remember. Diane will confirm it where we were at. Anyway, so tornado comes through. Sirens are going off. It turned black as night. And um, in that apartment complex, uh, there was like a place where they went to get a, like a, like all, everybody in the apartment mm -hmm. went down this basement. Storm shelter yeah, kind of like yeah. thing. So. And so everybody's freaking out. All the teens are freaking out, and everybody runs to the to the tornado thing, and they get down in the end. The manager's like, "Is everybody okay?" And Diane looks at Linda and says, "Where's Stacy?" And Linda's like, "I thought you got her." And Diane was like, "I thought you got her." They left me behind. <laughs> they left me behind, and I remember as a little girl, and like when you walked, in, I remember sitting in that hallway. The front door was open. Mm -hmm. It's black. Things are blowing. Everything's just blowing and going, and my sister freaks out, and the guy's like, what apartment? And Diane tells him what apartment. I can still see that apartment manager running in that door, picking me up. We ran across the parking lot. It was literally like it was out of the movie Twister. Yeah. And we got, and we no more got in that storm shelter, and that tornado came through and leveled that entire place. Oh, my gosh. So I find I'm kind of like the Twister girl. I find yeah, it fascinating. Yeah. But I, I was too little to be. And then it seemed like it was like five seconds later, and here come our parents just hauling back to the to the place and seeing the disaster and everything. Yeah. So wow. that's why I thought, yeah, tornadoes were, they're they're quite. I mean, it's crazy how they can just bounce mm -hmm. around. Well, you know, they're making Twister too now. I I'm I'm super excited about that. Yeah. I wonder if it's going to be like a, a continuing or if it's going to be a remake. I think it's going to be like kind of a little bit of both. You think it's going to yeah. be? It's going to be kind of hard to... Uh, from to, the trailer, it looks like there's going to be two tornadoes that they're following. Oh, okay. I love Twister. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so I'm first going to talk about the storm, the tornado of 2002. Okay? Storm produces 80, 90 mile per hour wind. I can't... 80, 90 mile per hour wind. Wow. And remember, it's like spinning. The National Weather Service issued first issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Clay County at 11.52 p.m. on Saturday night. And that's the worst thing about it is when they come at night. Because mm -hmm. it's really dark. You really can't see them yeah. unless there's thunder and lightning. But I'm sure at this time, everyone still has their radios. Yeah. So the... the <laughs> everyone's yeah. getting woken up and yeah. running around the house. Now, now we'd get them on our phones, wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah, that's kind yeah. of interesting. Although a tornado watch was also in effect, an official tornado warning was never issued. Hmm. It was never issued on that one. The tornado warning siren sounded in Flora shortly after midnight after the report of a funnel cloud touching down south of Flora on Blue Mound Road, where the brunt of the storm did the most damage. How old were you in 2002? Uh, not born. <laughs> I'm an 03 baby. Okay, so I was literally getting ready to say everybody will remember this except for my co-host. There were reports of major damage to nearly 12 residents south of Xenia and Flora. 
The high winds blew over and twisted trees and power lines were reported down. The Flora ESDA activated their emergency operational center and along with Flora Rescue, Flora Fire Department, Flora Police Department, ESDA personnel, the Clay City Rescue and the Clay County Sheriff's Department, a search of the damaged area was conducted. Initially, a report was received indicated a mobile home belonging to Wayne Delaney family had been completely destroyed and the whereabouts of the family was unknown. After a short period of searching, the family was reported to be at Clay County Hospital receiving treatment for injuries. So the very first picture I have is of the Delaney, uh, the Delaney's lose home and possession. That, that's the Delaney. So this is the first story I'm going to talk about, okay? Um, it says, Wayne and Janice Delaney lost everything but their lives in the tornado, which demolished their trailer home just off Blue Mound Road, south of Florida in the early hours, <clears throat> Sunday, April 27th. Interviewed Sunday morning, Delaney said it was a hell of a ride. My sister called at about 12.30 a.m. and said, there's a really bad storm coming. You'd better go. And nothing was coming over the scanner, but I looked out the window and I saw my carport headed right for the house. Can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Can you imagine? My wife was carrying the baby near the door, and I said, we'd better get out, and that's the last thing I remember. It must have knocked me out. I woke up way out in the field and called for my wife and heard her hollering. And I ran over and she had the baby. Were she and the baby were pinned under the washer and dryer. And I don't know how I did it, but I just threw them off of them and we didn't really know where we were. But we could see the road by the lightning flashes. So we ran for the road and an NAL guy was driving by and he took us to the hospital. Can you believe that? Look at that. I mean, that's that's their back porch. Their house yeah. is literally gone. Isn't that something? The baby is cut up some, and we were all banged up a little, but we're all out of the hospital, and we are lucky to be alive. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah, I, it's crazy. Yeah, there they are standing there. They're literally still probably in their hospital gowns. Yeah. It looks like it. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. Hmm. Then the next one we're going to talk about is Ruth, the Ruth Steele. Ruth Steele lives on. I remember, I remember when all this thing was, this was happening. So yeah, let's go. Oh, that's just a tree down. I saw that. Look at how that tree is all completely twisted. That was one of the trees in the, in the yard of the Delaney's mobile home. And it, it like I said, those tornadoes just twist and twist and twist. Yeah. Isn't that crazy how it just. It does that, yeah. So now we're gonna go to Ruth Steele's home, what it looked like afterwards. Okay, all right, Ruth Steele residence suffers damage. My hands are gonna be all yucky too. Yeah. I was, this is, this is uh, the coming from Ruth. I was pretty calm until it was over, <laughs> which is, <laughs> that's the type of person you want in a crisis. Oh yeah. Seriously, if you think about it, no panic until it's done. Yeah. I think I've kind of got that type of personality where it's like nothing will affect me till I'm like mm -hmm. w when it's over that it's like what just happened? I would like to think I also have that personality, but I know like halfway through the situation that's when I'm going to start panicking. You're going to panic. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to think that. Now my husband would probably say no, I'm just the opposite, but I'm going to go with the way I think I am. But anyway, get old Ruth here. Afterwards, I became upset, said Ruth Steele, as she stood in her debris strewn, strewn, is that S T R E W? Strewn. strewn yard Sunday afternoon south of Flora. The Steele residents received major damage during Saturday night's tornado. Only 24 hours earlier, the property was a tranquil, peaceful farm. On Sunday, it looked like a war zone. Shards of glass lay everywhere. Twisted metal and downed trees littered the acres of the land. Near her house was Steele's white pickup truck, now severely damaged as was her car. Steele lost all of her outbuildings, a barn, and suffered major damage to her home. Every window in my house was blown out, she said. 
Steele, who is a who was a teacher at Lincoln and Xenia grade school, said she had been asleep about three hours before the storm hit. Something woke me up, and she said, I don't know exactly what, but when I woke up, I heard the strong winds and lightning and thunder. She said she got up and began to unplug her television set and computer. Yeah, okay, real quick. I, I would never even think to do that. Yeah. I would, I would never think to I do guess something maybe like she that. thought it was coming from the computer TV. Yeah, I may, oh, so maybe. So she was yeah. like. So there's also that thing, because like back in the day, they'd say when a tornado was coming, you should open your windows in your house. Yeah. So like it kind of like blows, the yeah. wind blows through, because something like if your windows are shut, that pressure. But then I've heard that that's been disproven, too. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what, what I'd do. Hmm. She said she got up and began to unplug her television set and computer. I looked outside and saw a large tree bending over and decided I need to go to the basement, she recalled. As she began to hear the windows of her house shatter, she decided to seek shelter inside the, a closet instead. So she was probably, everything was probably hitting so fast, she yeah. was probably afraid to even go to the basement. Um, I got to the closet and pulled the folding doors around me, she said. I could hear the outbuilding being destroyed and the trees crashing down. Then all I could hear was breaking glass. I can't even imagine how terrifying that was. Yeah. Still said she was glad, glad she decided to leave her bedroom as it received extensive damage. As I was in the closet, I kept thinking to myself that my house was about to be sucked up. But I never thought about myself, she recalled. I wasn't fearing death. In fact, I remained pretty calm. Let me get over to page five. Ah, newspapers. <coughs> da -da -da -da. We're going to finish talking here with Ruth Steele. <laughs> she said she stayed uh, pretty calm during the ordeal. It was about an hour after the storm that uh, the realization of what had happened finally set in. Then I became upset. She said, but I knew that God had saved me. Uh, we're going to come back after this commercial break and continue talking, talking about Clay County tornadoes. If you're looking for a loan for your brand new home, call Clay County State Bank. If you want to transfer money so your future will look sunny, call Clay County State Bank. We got checking and savings and bill pay too. In online banking, just ask a key. For all your banking needs, we think you will agree. Clay County State Bank is the place you need to be. Clay County State Bank. At Clay City Banking Company, we're all on the same team, regardless of zip code. At home, work, school, or across the country, you can be part of our team with our cutting-edge mobile banking products. From your hand, you can check balances, transfer money, make deposits, and pay bills. Looking for a loan? We've got you covered with our mortgage, agriculture, commercial, and consumer loans. Join our team today. Play City, Floor, Louisville, and Fairfield Banking Companies. We're the hometown banks, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. It's the weekend, and your symptoms are worsening. The morning of a big meeting and you have a bigger sore throat. Ever experienced that urgency after picking up your sick child and your community health center has already closed? You will be able to connect to a provider at crhpc.org. Even if you have never been to CRHPC, you are welcome to utilize our services. Feel better after scheduling a video visit with CRHPC. Tomorrow. Some fear the uncertainty it brings. Some trust the promise it holds. At Grinnell Mutual, we are always looking forward to tomorrow, growing and innovating. So even if the plans you have for the future aren't the same as the plans that the future holds for you, you can be ready. Because we'll be ready, like we have been for over 100 years. Trust in that. Trust in tomorrow. Talk to your mutual agent today. Your local agent is on the square. Louisville, Clay County, Farmers Mutual Insurance. And we are back. Yay! We are talking about the tornado of 2002 that wrecked havoc on Blue Mound and the south side of Flora. We're talking about Ruth Steele here, her house. And um, if you want to go ahead and pull up some pictures. Yeah. Shortly after the storm, her son Walter 
pulled into the driveway to check on his mother, but was unable to make his way to the house because of the huge trees blocking the path. I could hear my son calling for me, Still said. I hollered back that I was all right and told him to stay where he was because of the downed power lines. At that point, Still said she was actually more calm than her son. Still said an emergency worker shouted into the house to see if she was okay. She answered that she was wearing only one shoe and couldn't find the other. The emergency worker entered the damaged structure and together they found her other shoe and she was taken away to safety. As she looked out, out over the devastation late Sunday afternoon, Ruth still remained positive and upbeat. It'll be all right, she said. People have been wonderful to me today. All day long, folks have come here to help clear away the mess and offer me assistance and I really appreciate it. As family members and friends offered her assistance, she thanked them and said, I'm fine. I've got art papers and I need to grade. Okay, so she's still in business mode there. <laughs> Imagine, said one of her friends, going through all of this and today she is concerned about grading papers. Yeah, did I have any more pictures on Ruth yep, Steele's house? Yeah, one more. Yeah, holy moly. Woo! I can't imagine a tree being on my house, can you? No. Wow. Look at that one. That is crazy. Yeah. I, apparently there was a, was some, uh, the, the headline right underneath it says somebody was killed. Mm. Now, this next one is, is the Henderson property damaged. Okay? And this family actually was, uh, I mean, it was, it was damaged in this tornado, but they actually had, were tornado victims before 1971. W number three, Henderson property. With the sounds of chainsaws, Pre, pre, permitting the air, the Larry and Joyce Henderson property south of Flora was a beehive of activity Sunday afternoon as family members, friends, and total strangers gathered to clear the debris left by Saturday night's storm. See, and that's the beauty, I'm telling you what, the beauty of a small town. Yeah. I mean, every one of these stories that I've read, family members, strangers, people, that friends, everybody just, I love the way a small town comes together. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great thing. So, I'm just saying that. People can live in the cities all you want, but I don't think city folk do yeah. what country folk do. <laughs> we, were, we are so lucky, said Joyce Henderson, speaking inside her kitchen. The storm moved on both sides of the house. The property... Oh, man, so they got all the way around the yeah. house. The property received lots of tree damage, and the roof to their deck was completely gone. The entire house will have to be re-roofed. It was raining inside the dining room earlier, she laughed. Despite the ordeal, she remained calm and upbeat. When you have God taking care of you, you cannot be unhappy, she smiled. Her husband, Larry, stood outside on what, what, la, 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 on what was left of the deck, chatting with friends. It sounded like a whistle when the storm hit, he said. Between taking phone calls from concerned friends and neighbors, Joyce Henderson and her daughter, Sue Taylor, recalled that this was the second hit by a tornado. I remember it clearly, Sue said. It was December 15, 1971. The Henderson son, City Commissioner Norman Henderson, said he was in the eighth grade at that time and the family was living on the same property in a mobile home. When the storm was over, we found that our mobile home had been turned upside down and we were all standing on the ceiling, he said. And our Christmas tree and presents were still intact, added Joyce. The Hendersons were in bed when Saturday night storm tr struck. We jumped up and tried to make it down the hallway, Joyce said. We were praying the entire time. We thought the whole house was going to be blown away. The Hendersons said they were amazed at the outpouring of people who came to help on Sunday. People were bringing us food early this morning, Joyce said. We are so thankful. And we got pictures of the Henderson home, too. Wow. Look at that one. Above the remains of the one, oh, that's a different one. Yeah, but can you imagine? Isn't that insane? Nothing's yeah. left. And I think if I was alive in 2002. If you, if you were alive in that time, I period, definitely would not want to be their neighbor. This is the second tornado <laughs> that's hit them. Right, exactly. Yeah. 
So it, it makes it makes it so if they've been hit twice in the same exact location, I mean that just goes to show you that tornadoes are just they're they're distinct on where they go, mm-hmm. maybe. I don't yeah. know, it's crazy, right? Huh. Or maybe they, they just are very unlucky and tornadoes just really Follow have something them. out for yeah, them. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a curse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Well. Material things can be replaced, but the love and the kindness that we received is a priceless gift. We will never forget. To you, our family and friends, thank you for helping us, encouraging us, and praying for us. May God bless each and every one of you. Sincerely, Larry and Joyce Anderson. Isn't that something? Yeah. Once again, these family and friends, they all come out. They come out in groves. Now, I'm going to read about another storm. Okay. Now, this tornado happened in 2004. Now, there's been tornadoes. I remember when, as a little girl, a tornado literally going right down South Locust. So there's little ones, and then there's these that do damage. Now, this one in 2004 took out a tree in, the, in my front yard. Um, this tree was a beautiful, big tree. Um, it turned bright red. In this, it was the first tree to turn in the fall. It was mm-hmm. red. It kind of hung over the road a little bit. I love this tree, right? When this storm hit, we were home, and it was on, I think it hit on a Monday or a Sunday. I can't remember. We'll find out here in the, in the minute. But anyway, my boys were home, so when this storm hit. And um, I remember, it like, and I, I was one of them weirdos. Like, I had, like, ba- a radio, batteries, water, some food. Yeah. The, I even had, like, an old mattress because I've been through tornadoes before, right? <laughs> so I even had an old mattress where you put it under. I had the plan where we were going to go. Yeah. So I had to be been a Monday. The boys must have been off school because Jim was at work because it was just me and Mac and Connor. And um, next thing you know, I'm like, man, it's getting ugly outside. I'm like, let's go to, you know, Mac was in his room, and his room is in the front. And out the side out of his bedroom was that big tree. And... Um, so I'm like, I'm like yelling at Connor, Connor, go to the basement, because Connor's room was right behind Max. So I literally, and now the sirens are going off. The mm. sirens are going off. So I'm like headed in there. I got the basement, you know, the basement door is open. And I walk into Max's room. I'm like, come on, Mac, let's go. At the time I said that, you heard cracking, twisting, and, and, on the, and that tree. Uh. But praise the Lord, the tree, it could have went two way, three ways. The road to the east or on my house and that tree was like crackling and thundering and crackling and thundering and it let and it didn't even the whole tree fell off to the east into that side yard we have one ginormous branch was just left right over Mac's room otherwise that tree would have come right in and I was like Mac let's go now and as soon as we were going that that tree came down it was like so yeah this one, this one in 2004, or t- I'm sorry, yeah, 2004 was one. It like it ended up getting to the south end of town, and this one decided to go to Clay City. Mm. This little so- storm decided it was going to make its way to Clay City. So a lot of the properties we're going to talk about are going to be in Clay City. But I did want to show a picture first. Um, um, let me see, Elmwood. There's a. It did take out a tree in Elmwood. That's Elmwood Cemetery. So it did take out a tree, a tree in Elmwood, and I'm going to see where I want to start my, yeah, and I can't even think of where that would be. That must be at the front, very front of the road in Elmwood. <clears throat> Ooh, but if it took that, look how close that grave is. Yeah. That's kind of weird, isn't it? I can't read the names. Hmm. Here we go. The National Weather Service issued a tornado warning for Clay County at about, it was a Sunday night. At 7.15 Sunday evening, and warning sirens wailed to give residents ample time to find shelter. But the storm hit faster than expected, dumping large amounts of rain on already saturated area and bringing wind gusts over 60 miles per hour. So this one wasn't quite as crazy. And I missed it. What what was the date? It is... Uh, Sunday evening, and this was on Tuesday, so it would be at the end of May. So this this uh, so, paper came out June first. Yeah. So. so I would have been one. You were one. This. You were one when this happened. So you didn't care. Yeah. You didn't care what was going on. I think we have to take a commercial break. Uh, yeah, we do. I think we do. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back.
you bowl like this? That's great. Do you bowl like this? That's great too. That's because whether you're a pro or you just want to have a lot of fun, at Peggle's Silver Dollar Lanes, we have a lane for you. We have Galaxy Bowling, Gaming for Kids and Adults, Joe's Pizza, a full bar, darts, pool, and fresh and clean bowling shoes. Boy, does that smell nice. So come on down to Peggle Silver Dollar Lanes in Effingham, where we have a lane for you. My name is Robin Stanford. I own Stanford Marketing. It's a promotional products business along with an embroidery business. And we do custom hats, t-shirts, anything, you name it, we can make it. People like that we do stuff in-house and we can actually make things here and that we're not contracting the work out to other places. We never say no. We always try to find a way to do it. If anybody can do it, we can do it. We are hardworking women, that is for sure. Come to Stanford Marketing in Florida for all your custom and promotional needs. The insurance specialists have options to tailor to your needs at CSI Insurance Brokers. Experienced insurance brokers at CSI are skilled with all types of insurance plans and policies and represent many companies, including Safeco Insurance. You'll benefit from their detailed expertise, unbeatable premiums, and commitment to customer service. CSI Insurance Brokers and Safeco Insurance Company, providing affordable rates on quality insurance since 1952. For over 50 years at your locally owned and operated Roll King Supply in Salem and Olney, we've helped you and your neighbors enjoy an easy country lifestyle. We carry the most thorough sporting goods department around with a huge variety of hunting and fishing gear, camping equipment, and a variety of firearms for any need. Our team is here to help you find whatever you need. Open every day, it's Roll King in Salem and Olney, your locally owned farm and home store. And we're back. We are back, and we are talking about tornadoes since it's spring. I, I, we'll just say that this is, by the way, with Beth and Stacy's way of telling you, be prepared for tornadoes. Yeah, well, we were supposed to have one last week. What, a tornado? Mm-hmm. Uh, last Tuesday. Really? Mm-hmm. wonder where I was at. Here? <laughs> Recording yeah. a show? I think it was going to be during the night. Oh, see, yeah, and they come during the night. We can't be having that. That's not yeah, cool. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there was there was one that came through. Mm -mm. I think but. we've been. I think I feel like there's been times where like the tornadoes were supposed to come through and then they died. They didn't yeah. come. We were definitely on, on watch. Yeah. Now yeah. watches are one of those things where it's just like ah. Yeah. We're, we're paying attention because it might happen. A warnings they've seen it. Yeah. And we must have some great spotters because there are people that are, that you know they'll yeah. be. Yeah. The best way I had watch and warning explained to me, Tornado Watch is like, hey, we have all of the ingredients to make cookies, but we're not making cookies. Mm -hmm. And then Tornado Warning is, we're going to start making cookies. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way of looking yeah. at it. Hmm. That is a good way of looking so at it. So if you have a watch, you don't need to worry too much yet. Yeah, right. Warning is when you need to really start. Pay attention. It's going to Pay attention happen. and prepping. The villages of Louisville and Xenia received major damage, but Clay City and the south end of Flora were the storm's major targets. As of present press time, early Tuesday morning, portions of Flora and Clay City were still without electric. Tornado-laden storms battered the Midwest on Sunday, killing one man in Missouri and one person in Indiana. The Clay County electric crews worked throughout the night to restore power. Now we're going to talk about some of the people that we know that it that it impacted. Let me get my paper. Okay, I think the first person we're going to talk about here, uh, we already showed the tree. Um, let's see here. La, 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 la. Oh, uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what Marlene said. I don't have a picture with Marlene, okay. so here we go. Um. It was just after 7 o'clock Sunday evening and Marlene Delaney had just stretched out on her sofa after looking out the window of her double wide on Floor Avenue. One moment the sky was gray, the next moment it was green. I looked out and thought that it appeared we were going to get some rain, she said. I didn't hear the warning siren. The next thing I knew there was a horrible crash as my neighbor's large tree toppled to the ground right next to my house. I ran straight to the bathtub for safety. 
The winds flung Delaney's large metal garage into the middle of the street, where it came to rest upside down on Austin Avenue. It was a little scary, she said. Now we're going to talk about the Keith Brake family. The Keith Brake family of Clay City was enjoying a Sunday at Omega Lake. A wise choice, considering that a huge tree plunged into the master bedroom of the mm. family's mobile home, shearing off the entire rear section of the dwelling. We were lucky, Brake said. We were gone, or we probably would have been seriously injured. So I've got pictures of the Keith Brake house. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. So you can see the back of their home. Look at that tree right yeah. in the back of their home. Wow. Man, I guess it is a good thing they were home. Isn't that something? Um, the storm, and then we're going to talk a little bit about um, another person. Actually, it's my aunt and uncle. They had some tree damage done. Uh, the storm hit just before dusk Sunday evening, and Gary Franklin, a.k.a. Butch Franklin, my uncle, was barbecuing on the family's grill behind their home in Clay City. I went outside to get food off the grill, and all of a sudden the storm hit. It came so fast, Franklin said. I barely got back inside and pulled down the garage door, which suddenly bulged out about six inches when the storm hit. It was a monster. The Franklins lived directly across from the Summers Kistler Funeral Home in Clay City and lost an estimated 32 trees many which were over a hundred years old my, where my aunt and uncle lived there i did a i did a it was called oh my gosh i just lost it oak mound it was that big mm. that big old house there they live on that hill right across from the summer's kit and we did a show on that not too long ago on that house um da -da 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 -da. one of the reasons we bought this property was because of the big trees that we loved franklin said by monday afternoon the franklin's front yard was a beehive of activity as volunteers worked with chainsaws to break up the trees and haul away the debris this is just amazing that all these people would help us when they all have problems of their own becky franklin said we are so thankful for their assistance. We are sick about the trees, but we're lucky that nobody was hurt and the house didn't receive any damage except for a few shingles that were blown away. It makes you stop and think. And I have yeah. a picture, um, number three, of this is my uncle. Uh, that's my uncle cutting trees down out of his yard. So you can see these trees, that Oak Mound uh, Hill where they live is what it was, I believe it was called. Um, like you said, there were just trees all over the place. They still do have some trees left, but it was just like a jungle in front of their house when all that happened. I remember that happening. That's my uncle out there cutting down the trees. Then, and the picture we're going to show you after I get done reading this next story is of the original funeral home that um, I don't know if I've done a story on that building yet or not, but it was a, now there's a little brick building there, the funeral home's there, but it once had a grand mansion living there across the street the summer kistler funeral home resembled a southern plantation after a major major battle had been fought on the front lawn most of the aged giant trees were resting on their side exposing their massive roots the sound of chainsaws filled the air in the village as neighbors assisted neighbors strangers helped strangers in the aftermath of the previous night's destruction we just sold our house, said Chris Osborne. At least the new owner um, will be getting a new roof and will have a lot fewer leaves to rake since we lost the limbs on our property. Let's go back uh, before I read that next story, but let's show a picture of the old funeral home. Yeah, look at all those trees down. That was the big, beautiful plantation style what the funeral home used to look like in Clay City. I love that building. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, uh, it's no longer there. And, uh, but a lot of the trees are gone. It just kind of looks like a, not a nice place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy and when you lose those trees. A battleground is the correct description. It absolutely is. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Isn't that something though? I just can't, it just blows your mind. It absolutely blows your mind. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. What else do I got here? Okay, let's continue reading. I've got myself. The damage in Clay City was mostly to trees and downed power lines, said village president Trevor Bissey. 
I believe there were three mobile homes that were ex extensively damaged, but we have had a lot of volunteers today, and the town looks a lot better than it did early this morning when the sun came up. It could have been a lot worse, Busy said. There have been no confirmed injuries, but with a storm, I have never seen trees do what these trees were doing. Whipping, twisting, snapping, it was something. Floor Mayor Charles Crowder praised the efforts of Clay County Flora ESDA coordinators, Jerry Ellis and his department, and members of the Floor Police Department, the Floor Volunteer Fire Department, for their assistance following Sunday's storms. Everything was so well organized, he said. We are very fortunate that, we were, that there were no injuries or deaths. The south end of town received the most damage, shocking, with trees on houses and a lot of electric lines downed and power poles snapped in two. Our city crews, our city crews have been fantastic. I know they are exhausted because they have been working nonstop since 7.30 last night. The Red Cross fed the local volunteers Monday evening at the Clay County Shrine Building. Yeah, is it? I mean, those. I mean, the pictures are just kind of terrifying, yeah. actually. I remember. I think now, it might have been the 2002 storm when the tree was blown down. Because mm -hmm. after reading that one, the 2004 storm, I was actually over at. It was a Sunday, so I think I've got my 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 years mixed up. It was a Sunday, and we were having and we we were having Bible study over at Sunday, oh. and because I remember we were all at the Methodist Church. And the Methodist Church is the place where everybody would go when it like kind of like the safe haven. You know, how you have certain yeah. places. And um, there was a guy, Dwayne Osborne, I think he was on ESDA, and he went to that church. And he was like, everybody down to the basement, everybody down to the basement. And so I had my my boys were with me, so we were all down the basement. And I remember, and then people were just flooding into the church, and people were hysterical. Mm. wasn't really hysterical because I'm like, okay, whatever happened, you know, it is what it's going to be. Yeah. You know, we're in the basement. You know, but I, then I was, I remember thinking to myself, dear God, if I have to go, please don't put me in a place where there's a bunch of people panicking because yeah. people were panicking and the more they panicked was freaking everybody else out. Yeah. And I remember one lady came and I was kind of upstairs cause I was like, the boys were downstairs. So I'm like kind of up looking out, talking to Dwayne a little bit and a lady come running into the church and she said, Oh my gosh, the South end of town's been completely leveled. I'm like, oh, well, that's great. That's right where I live, yeah. you know, so because Jim was at home. And so anyway, and people were, of course, they brought in their dogs and cats. I love my dogs and cats, too. But somebody brought in a pet chicken in a birdcage. <laughs> so I was like, please, dear Lord, just, you know, just don't let me die where I'm going to be dying with a whole bunch of people panicking. And a chicken. And a chicken. And it was just, it was just kind of, and then, you know, I'm like, well, you know, after it was done, Dwayne's like, so we headed home and well, I remember driving the boys home and we didn't have too much trouble on the highway, but then it was what, once you turned off there at the old, where the old truck stop used to be, it was just like mass chaos and we couldn't even yeah. get home. And my husband, this is a funny story. So we finally made it home and Jim got in trouble that night because the storm, the storm is not done. Okay, so we get home. The storm still, you know, because I'm like, I'm out of here. I got the boys. It's like the biggest part was gone. So we did drive home, and we got into the house, and she was like, in the, in the, uh, he was in the garage. He was getting his chainsaw out. I mean, power, like trees down, mm -hmm. power lines. We don't know if the power shut off. I said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm going to go. People might need help. There's trees out in the, out in the road. I'm going to go. I'm cutting them trees down. I'm going to move them. I said, Jim, it's still thunder and lightning. You can't go out there. Well, yeah. Stacy, there might be somebody hurt that can't get an ambulance down there. And I'm like, okay, whatever you want to do. So I'm just sitting there, boys, and thinking, there he goes, off with his little chain store. He's going to get electrocuted, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, with the chains. Next, he went down the street 10 minutes, and he came in dragging his little chainsaw. I said, what happened? He said, the police told me to take my chainsaw and go home. <laughs> They got it under control, and they said, Jim, we don't even know where the power lines are at, and it's pitch black out here. You might cut into a power line. Yeah. But he was just like a devastated five-year-old that got told to take his bat and ball and go home. He, kept, he was like, they don't want my help. I'm like, well, no. There's power lines. It's dark. Because yeah. there was no moonlight because the clouds. Mm -hmm. And when he was going to go do that, it was still. Th I'm like, Jim, it's thundering and lightning. 
Not in his head. He was going to go out there. And He's he got was, a good heart. He does have a good heart. And anytime he can pull out that chainsaw, He's a happy Oh, camper. so it was really just so he can use the chainsaw. I think it was just so he could use his tools. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it was. He just wanted to get his tools out. Yeah. Oh, that man. I don't know about him. Oh, goodness. Well, let's see here. Uh, okay, well, this is kind of an interesting thing I've picked out. <laughs> Courage is not the... Oh, this is... We always end with a... Uh, a great inspirational quote. Mm -hmm. Some of them I like, some of them I don't. But anyway, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Hmm. After we're talking about yeah. tornadoes, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Yeah, I really like that. It is because, so just in that case, I, I mean, I guess it actually just kind of talking about Jim there, he didn't care. He was going to go out and do, Yeah. he was going to go out and do what needed to be done to make sure because he was worried about an ambulance if somebody needed an ambulance that day. Yeah. So he wasn't thinking whatsoever. He wasn't fearful at all. Of course, I don't think he's really afraid of much. Yeah. <laughs> he just kind of, and he really wanted to use that chainsaw. The chainsaw was more important than being scared. I think so. I think you're absolutely right. I think that's exactly what happened. But, yeah, those storms are kind of crazy. But I don't really think since what is – so it's been 20 years since we've really had yeah. a devastating storm. So hopefully it won't be our time now. Yeah. <laughs> Next month we're going to have a bad tornado. Yeah, because yeah, it's like – well, and with the weather change, it's so weird because for March it's just too warm right now. Yeah. It's really re a weird warm. Mm -hmm. So that's so it's shocking to me that we can't, that we haven't even, you know, it, it's shocking to me yeah. that we haven't had a bad storm, which I feel like, I don't know if it's like the the patterns changing, but it seems like where floor is at, it seems like the storms that have, even the snowstorms kind of like start coming our way. We're thinking, okay, we're going to get, and then it seems like it, it's, I don't know if God's got his hand on Clay County right now or what, but it seems like it just goes, whoop, mm -hmm. and splits right around us. Have you noticed that lately? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of odd how it doesn't seem. It seems like, oh, wow, this is it. We're going to get it now. We're going to get a bad storm, and then it never happens. Yeah. That's it. Well, Weird. that's the end of our show today. Thanks for watching, by the way, with Beth and Stacy. Um, you can catch us on Facebook. You can watch us on Wabash on Channel 100 every day at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Or you can find us on YouTube, by the way, with Beth and Stacy. Hit and like that button, and you can get caught up on every episode we do. Yeah. Um, you got any, any, any words, Ty? Uh, watch the show. Watch the show. <laughs> That's right. Watch the show. <laughs> well, we will see you next time, and God bless you, and have a great day. Goodbye.